So I made a goal this year of trying to read more books, but specifically quality books that were actually going to benefit me. If this is one of your goals too, check out my current favorites. I'm Ryan, Christ following wife and stay at home mom to four sweet boys. I'm growing and learning how to glorify Christ as a wife, mom, homemaker, and teacher. So come and grow and learn with me. I am Mama on Mission. So I say current favorites because this list is ever evolving, right? The more you read, the more you're going to like books or dislike books. And so your list is going to kind of shift. Um, but here are the ones that come to mind when I think of what are the best books that have really grown me and helped me specifically spiritually, but there's a few in here that help me in other ways. So I broke this down into five categories. Now these are all nonfiction because like I said, I want them to be books that really help me um, grow. And I know there are some fiction books that do that, but by and large, not really. Um, and I do listen to a lot of fiction. Um, I occasionally read fiction too, like in an actual book. Um, but I listen to a lot of fiction and so I didn't want to like add in those because those are just kind of like mindless listening. Um, but these are my five categories for books that have really helped me. We have books on God, books on Christian living in general. We have books on womanhood. We have books on the mind and the body and we have books on parenting. And then I threw in a few extra at the end. So as far as books on God, the one that's going to be probably at the top of my list, maybe not number one, but really high up there for probably a long time is The Holiness of God by R.C. Sproul. Now, this book really describes what holiness is. That's kind of one of those words that we just throw around, right? You hear it all the time. You see it in scripture. You know, the angels cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord and, you know, our holy God. All these things, you hear this all the time, but you don't really think about what that means. In this, we learn that that is the key characteristic of God and who he is. It is his number one attribute. And it's not something that we should just let be vague in our minds. We have to understand what holiness is. And he does a great job of explaining that. And it really changes your view of who God is and who we are in light of who he is. Another one that... I kind of hesitated putting on here because it's more of a devotional, but it is so good and it really did change my perspective on things, is Morning and Evening by Charles Spurgeon. Um, this is just little snippets that just kind of turn your perspective back to God. And I love that it's morning and evening so you can read one in the morning, kind of get a boost, kind of just focus your thoughts and your intentions toward the Lord. And then at the evening before you go to bed, you can do the same thing. And it's such a good, like everything he puts in there, there's never just like a throwaway page. They're all really rich. In the womanhood category, I have four books. This is not mama on mission for no reason. Um, I feel very passionately about womanhood and about what motherhood looks like for Christian women, what being a wife looks like for a Christian woman, what just being a woman in general looks like for a Christian. And I've had to do a lot of reading to help understand that. And so one of my favorites is Fruit of Her Hands by Nancy Wilson. This is Doug Wilson's wife. And she is a very well-spoken woman and she's fluffy but not so fluffy that you're just like okay i'm listening to poetry she's fluffy in a good way and that's coming from someone who doesn't like fluff she has a very beautiful way of writing that makes you just like oh i just want to be that wife i want to be that mom um but it has real application it's not just the fluff and so this book is all about you know, we tend to want to look at our husbands and think, oh, I wish he would do this. I wish he would act this way. I wish he would. I wish he would. I wish he would. Instead of looking at ourselves and saying, how can I help him? How can I make my home in a way such that this and this could happen? How could I do what I'm doing in a better way to serve our family as a whole? Another one of my favorites is A Typical Woman by Abigail Dodds. This goes against our culture. That is very, very mixed up. Culture in one hand is elevating women way beyond what they deserve. You know, women are everything and our bodies are awesome and you should worship me like the goddess I am. And that sounds ridiculous, but that's what they're trying to sell you. And then there's the other side where women are kind of just bleh, nothing, not important. Um, and obviously we're leaning more this way currently in the culture, but that's not always been the case. And a typical woman says, no, it's not this and it's not this. Here's what God says about womanhood. Another one, and you've heard me speak about this book lots of times, but it's Let Me Be a Woman by Elizabeth Elliot. This is a series of letters from Elizabeth to her daughter as she was getting married. And this, again, like Nancy, she is very poetic in how she speaks, but you take away something from it. And she just keeps pointing you back, God says. God says. Here's what God says. Here in my experience is what 
you know, has happened, but God says, you know, and it's constantly pointing back to let us be the women that God created us to be, not what our husbands ask us to be, not what we think we ought to be, not what the world tells us we ought to be, but what God says. And then another new favorite is Even Exile by Rebecca Merkel. And this is very much anti-feminist and how do we fight against that and be free in Christ, right? Be free, but not free as in, you're not going to tell me what to do, but free in walking in who God created us to be. Do you see a theme here? My favorite books in Christian living. So one of my favorites is Total Truth by Nancy Piercy. This is a book that looks at how the world has kind of twisted Christianity and what it is and has, you know, infiltrated the church. And there are things that we say and think without thinking about it that are really more of a worldly worldview instead of a Christian worldview. And we kind of slap Jesus on it and just run with it. But what is the truth? We must return to truth. And that book is all about that. Another book I love that kind of fits in that same category is Respectable Sins by Jerry Bridges. Now this kind of like the Total Truth book shows how the world has kind of let things slide into Christianity and they're just okay. They're sins that we don't really think of as sins or they're sins that we're like, oh yeah, I guess if I sit and think about that, it's a sin, but it's not really a big deal. Um, and just because the culture changes doesn't mean right and wrong do. And so Jerry does a great job of pointing out what not just the fact that it's happening, but what those specific sins are. And so you will get convicted reading this book, um, but it's very, very good. Another one is Secrets of an Unlikely Convert by Rosaria Butterfield. And this book is more of kind of her testimony of how she became a believer. She was living way far away from the Lord um, and by the world standards had a lot, had everything. Um, but this tells a story of how she was brought to the Lord and what I took away from it was what the Christians did in playing a role in her conversion, um, both good and bad. And it just really encouraged me to just love the people around me that need the Lord. And then I have one more in this category and that is Death by Living by N.D. Wilson. Now this book is all about loving your life and truly living your life, not rule, 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 follow these rules, stick, you know, toe the line. Um, but loving your life and enjoying your life, but how to do that to the glory of God, realizing that we're all dying, right? We're all stepping closer and closer to death, all closer and closer to eternity. So what are you leaving behind? What mark are you leaving on this world? What legacy are you leaving behind? And it just makes you really think about long-term, what am I doing today? No matter what you're writing history for today, the mark you make today matters. So are you going to leave an ugly mark? Are you going to leave a bland nothingness mark, or are you going to change the world for Christ? Now that sounds like dramatic. Like, what do you want me to do, Ryan? Like sell my possessions and move across these? I don't know, maybe, <laughs> but what are you doing daily to really leave a mark, whether it be in your children or your spouse or your church or wherever it is, how are you bringing Christ into your day to day to really leave a legacy? Next here are my books on parenting that I love. Um, the first one I just recently read, and that is Why Children Matter by Doug Wilson. This is all about looking at how God parents us as his children and creating that in our homes also. So we need to reflect God's fatherhood in our parenting. So one thing that really stuck out to me here was he was talking about how we are already justified. If you are a believer, if you have been converted, you are already justified before the Lord. Christ on the cross justified you. You are his son or daughter, no matter what. What you're working on now is your sanctification. You're becoming more and more like the father, right? And so if you are a Christian parent and you're modeling what it's like to be a good Christian, your son or daughter is your son and daughter, right? They're not going to, you're not going to write them off. You're not going to disown them. What you're doing is correcting behavior, disciplining them to make them more and more like God, to make them more sanctified. So this book really just dives into why do we parent the way we do and how do we fix it to be more like how God created us to parent? And then another one that I've loved is Raising Men, Not Boys by Mike Fabrez. And this one is great if you are a mom of a boy, not necessarily all boys, but just a boy, because it talks about the long game. You know, right now we are 
you know, disciplining talking back and we're disciplining, you know, slapping their brother, we're disciplining writing on the walls with crayons or whatever. Um, but these are men that you're disciplining who will one day have wives and they will one day have careers and one day have children of their own and one day have to, you know, maybe fight in a war or maybe have to, you know, stand up against some serious injustices or they might be the police officers, whatever it is, you're raising men. So we need to make sure that they actually are men in how they act and not just in their age. And this day and age, it's really hard to find true men if you think about it. And then my last category is kind of that mind and body category. Um, and these are Christian books, but they are just more focused on the body. Um, one of them is Broken Bread by Tilly Dillahay. And this really addresses food in general and nutrition and things like that. She talks about four different poles and how the tension of food kind of lies in all four of these and we can easily sway to one side or another. So there is asceticism or like strict rules, like I only eat this many calories ever. And then there's the, across from that, the gluttony, right? I'm gonna eat whatever I want, whenever I want, however much I want. And then there's, you know, another two would be snobbery, which like I only eat organic and I only eat the best of the best of the best. Um, and I will not eat anything that is from a fast food joint or whatever. Um, and then you have the opposite of that would be apathy. Like eh, it's just food. I don't care. Whatever it is, I'll just eat it. It's fine. Um, and I'm never going to make anything better than a frozen dinner. Um, and how all four of those are easily areas of sin when it comes to food, but how we need to lie in the middle and how our food should not cause us to sin. And then another one that's kind of similar is Love to Eat, Hate to Eat by Elise Fitzpatrick. And this book gets, it kind of talks about those same things, but it gets to the heart of why we feel these strong feelings about food one way or another. Um, we're easily drawn to gluttony or we're easily like obsessing over our weight. And so therefore food is like a major stumbling block for us and how God didn't create us for either one of those. God created us to enjoy food and to fuel our bodies with it, not to ruin our bodies with it, um, but not to view food as like some nasty thing that we just have to do. What I love about it is she really gets into people's stories about food. And so this is more kind of like the heart behind broken bread. And the third one is a book that I just finished called Holy Noticing by Charles Stone. This is one that I've mentioned before. And I said, you know, there's a lot of meat and there's some bones that we need to spit out too. Um, but this is all about the practice of slowing down and like getting our brains to like be where they ought to be. Our screens, you know, our little, whatever, your iPads or your phones or your television or your computer, whatever it is, they are constantly like pulling our attention away, right? Never mind the kids running around at your feet. Never mind, you know, you're getting a phone call or you're whatever. You have paperwork to do. You have housework to do. None of those in and of themselves are bad. But how do we stop and assess what is going on? How do we, you know, this is all about meditation, Christian meditation, though, not emptying your mind of everything and trying to just, you know, whatever meditation you think of. Um, this is more just taking time to slow down and like notice what's going on. And it sounds silly, but I've been using this practice for a while now. And it has really helped me to just like take a personal scan of like how I'm doing, um, in my relationships, in my health and all these different things. Um, they talk about the breathe model. So real quick, those areas are the body, the relationships, the environment around you, the afflictive emotions and the thoughts and the heart um, and engaging the world around you. It has just really helped me to like, you know, as I'm like more prone to anxiety and depression, as I've shared before, this is a good time each day and usually multiple times a day for me to just stop and just take inventory and saying, okay, where is there some sin popping up? Where am I kind of failing or dropping the ball? Or where is there like a buzzer going off that I'm ignoring? You know, is, is my stomach really hurting and I need to check out what's going on? Or am I feeling really sad, but I'm not going to like deal with it and I'm pushing it away and I'm going to explode if I don't deal with it? You know, things like that. Or is there a relationship that really needs some attention? And I'm just like, eh, I've got other things to do. Um, and so it just really helps you to slow your brain down. So then this final category that I just kind of threw in there because it's some books that one of them I'm not quite done reading, but the other two that are just like so good that I gained so much from is biographies. And so reading biographies of faithful Christians 
just does something to your heart and it kind of just like bolsters you and it's just like, yeah, let's go do this thing. Um, and definitely my favorite one so far has been Bonhoeffer by Eric Metaxas. You know, if you know anything about Bonhoeffer, he was a very humble, faithful man who was sent to the front lines to do some very scary things to obey the Lord. Um, he was around during Hitler and was involved in a plot to kill Hitler and all these things and just the gumption it took and the true faith it took, not just, oh yes, I believe in the Lord, but like, Lord, let's go do this. I'm terrified. <laughs> And then also the Christian heroes then and now. I know these are made for kids, but we read them in our homeschool every year. So far, all of them are good that I've read, but the two that really stick out to me are Adoniram Judson because he was the first missionary overseas from the United States. And that man faced some heartache. That man, I was sobbing as I was reading this aloud and my kids laughed every day because I cried every single day. Cause I'm like, how many people are gonna die? <laughs> um, but he just kept pressing on to share the gospel with those who hadn't heard it. And another one of my favorites of those is George Mueller, who he had nothing to give really. He had very little and he had to actually out of faith, just say, God, here's these kids around me. Here's these people around me that need help. They are poor. They are without food. They need someone to love them. And I don't have the resources to do it, but I'm doing it anyway. And just to see how God provided that obedience out of that obedience, so good, so good. And to just see the huge impact he made on so many people, truly astonishing. And then the last one that I'm currently working through is R.C. Sproul by Stephen Nichols. And so this book is all about R.C. Sproul and he is one of my favorite theologians. And I just love how it tells that he is just an ordinary, regular, relatable guy, but he is completely transformed by the Lord. And he just, changes so many people's lives, even now that he's passed away, um, through his wisdom, through his comedic ways of speaking. And he's just done so much for the kingdom. So I hope some of these make it to your to be read list. Um, mine just grows faster than I can read. So you might have the same problem, but let me know down below what you are reading and loving. And my next videos will be our morning basket. I'm going to share what's in those. That's a collaboration with some of my friends. And I'm going to also be sharing five things I do not do in my homeschool. So be sure to check that out. I thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.